Hi, welcome back. About a year ago, I valued Zomato just ahead of its IPO, and I thought it's time to revisit that valuation. In my original IPO valuation, based on the information of the prospectus, the value per share that I got was about 41 rupees per share. A lot has happened since. The market very clearly had a very different view about the company than I did, because the stock premiered at 74 rupees per share, that was the offering price, but soared on the very first day to 137 rupees. It was up 51% on its first day. And it stayed at high prices through much of 2021. Well, this year, 2022, has been a letdown for the company. The stock price has come down, and especially in the last five weeks, the selling seems to have intensified. Some of it can be traced to the company's acquisition of Blinkit, another Indian company that does grocery deliveries. Some of it just seems to be disillusionment with the stock overall. So the stock at 41.65 rupees just a couple of days ago, I thought it was time to revisit my original valuation, update it, and take a look at where to go next. So let me go back to July of 2021, when I valued Zomato based on the information in its prospectus. The story I told for Zomato was a big one, a story where Zomato would continue to grow in a food delivery market for India that would grow pretty much exponentially. I described Zomato as a joint bet on a country, India, and how much it would grow so that more people would be in the middle class with more discretionary income, on Indian eating habits, the increasingly shift away to restaurant eating, and a company, Zomato's capacity to dominate that market. And in my story, which I thought was a pretty upbeat story, I saw revenues going up sixfold over the next decade, margins improving, and the company progressively becoming a large profitable company. Based on the story and the numbers that came out of the story, the value per share that I came up with was 41 rupees per share. At that time, the stock hadn't been listed yet. There was talk of a listing price of 70 to 75 rupees, but there was no actual market price. And I put that out as my value per share. Now we'll come back and look at what the market did, but in the aftermath of my valuation of Zomato, I got a great deal of pushback. Half of it came from people who thought I was being far too optimistic attaching these large revenues and profits to an untested company, a company that had never made money before. The other half believed I was being far too pessimistic that I wasn't factoring in the potential revenues from grocery deliveries and the value of the platform itself. At some point, I decided that the best thing to do, rather than contest each person on their arguments, was to let people choose their own stories and valuations of Zomato. So in a follow-up post, I let people pick their own stories. Stories about what market Zomato was going after, what the market share for Zomato would be, what slice of those, those grow, the, the overall gross order value would stay with Zomato, profit margins, cost of capital. The end result is I got a range of values from a low value of 16 rupees per share to a high of 150. Now, not all of these stories are equally plausible, so I broke these stories down into plausible, probable, and so if you look at plausible stories, it is plausible that you could tell a story that could give you a value of 150 rupees, but you're pushing the limits of what's possible. The probable stories, I argued, gave a value closer to 40 to 50 rupees, perhaps a little higher than 50, but I could not see a way to stretch these stories to come up with 100 rupees per share or 150 rupees per share. Now, the reason that matters, the market has a mind of its own. When the stock went public on July 21st of 2021, the stock was, the offering price was set at 74, but the stock price jumped 51% that day. In fact, you look through the bulk of 2021, the stock price stayed elevated. Now you could argue that this is because of news coming from the company, but if you look at the actual earnings reports and news stories about the company, they were more negative than positive. The company continued to report big losses. In September of 2021, one of the co-founders left the company. That's never good news. So it can't be attributed to news. Clearly, the mood and the momentum, the pricing game, as I describe it, was in Zomato's favor. And then something changed. In 2022, the game clearly has shifted. News stories that would have evoked a positive response in 2021, earnings reports with losses and high revenue growth, were now causing the stock price to drop. In fact, in June 24th of 2022, Zomato bought Blinkit, 
the Indian grocery delivery company for 4,447 crores. And that seems to have triggered an intense amount of selling. In the last few days, the lock-in period expired. What is the lock-in period? Insiders and founders are not allowed to sell their sh shares during the lock-in period. When it expires, they're free to do so. So a lot of original investors, pre-public market investors in Zomato were selling. And that added to the sell selling that caused the price to drop to close to 41 rupees. Clearly the stock's been on a wild ride. Now, as you look at this price chart and you look at the price being close to value, you might say, isn't this vindication for your valuation? While some might make that argument, I'm not part of that group for three reasons. First, it seems to me a little skewed to celebrate only your successes and not talk about your failures. If I'm going to argue that Zomato is one of my successes because the price has come down to value, then I have to be open and honest and also say that I value Paytm at about 2,000 rupees per share and the stock is now trading at 713 rupees. Second, even if nothing in my valuation has changed, the value per share of 41 rupees was as of July of 2021. If my value was 41 rupees in July of 2021, and I believe that valuation, one year later, that value should be higher by about 11.5%. That's a cost of equity for Zomato. You'd expect the, the value to be higher. So even if nothing in my valuation has changed, the target shouldn't be 41, it should be closer to 45 to 46 rupees. But the reality is things have changed. There's new information about the company, new macro developments. You cannot compare a price in 22 to a valuation done in 2021. So I decided to revisit my valuation. I started by looking at what had changed. I started with the company. Let's start with the good news. The good news on the good news front, the food delivery market in India continues to grow and Zomato has continued to maintain its market share. In fact, it looks increasingly like the market is going to be consolidated with Zomato and Swiggy controlling 90% of the market share, at least of restaurant deliveries. That good news has translated into a growth in gross order values that more than doubled and a growth in revenues that have gone up about 81%. So both gross order value on the platform and revenues have gone up. In, in more good news, the cash that Zomato raised in its IPO has given it a cushion. The amount of cash the company has has increased more than fourfold if you include short-term investments, which gives the company a buffer. Why does this matter? It's a young company. It's a money-losing company. One of the things you worry about as an investor and try to bring into your value is the likelihood that the company will not make it. Having this cash cushion should reduce that failure risk. Now, on the bad news front, there's some. First, if you go back a couple of pages and look at revenues and gross order value, notice that the slice of gross order value, that's revenues, has dropped from 21 to 17%. That's a pretty big drop. That part of the drop is because of increased competition, part comes from higher delivery costs, and part of it comes from Zomato's entry into newer markets, a grocery delivery market where you get a smaller slice of revenues. In addition, the growth has come in fits and starts. And given that Zomato is a very active acquirer of other companies to incorporate into their business model, it's not clear how much of this growth is organic. In other words, Zomato is creating it with its own investing and how much of it is acquired. And finally, there is some bad news on the legal front. The Indian government recently put both Swiggy and Zomato on notice that they might be violating antitrust laws and they could face action in the future. Now, there's more bad news. If you look at the revenue growth, it looks good. But if you look at the expenses, they're growing even faster than the revenues. The cost of goods sold increased by 128%. Now, why does it matter? When young companies grow, one of the things that pushes them towards profitability is economies of scale. And where do economies of scale show up? It's your cost of goods sold grow at a slower rate than your revenues. Your expenses grow at a slower rate. That's not been true for Zomato, at least in the last year. So the operating margins are actually getting worse. The net margins are getting more negative as they go through time. One final point, and this is more still to be decided news. I can't make up my mind whether it's good news or bad news. Zomato, as I mentioned, follows a strategy of acquiring companies to get its growth. I'm nothing wrong with that. Many tech companies do this. 
And in fact, its recent acquisition of Blinkit is what triggered the most recent sell-off. The Blinkit acquisition was a big acquisition, much bigger than their traditional acquisition. And there are some conflicts of interest. The CEO of Blinkit is married to, uh, is married to one of the co-founders of Zomato. I'm not suggesting that there's anything underhanded, but it does make it more difficult to argue that it's, in the, that it's an objective assessment of value. Even if the Blinkit valuation pays off, the question is, can a company continue to grow primarily through acquisitions? Is this a value-creating strategy that is scalable? In many companies, it's not. It's up to Zomato to show us that it can. Secondly, Zomato is also acquiring a bunch of equity positions in other businesses, a portfolio, almost like running a mutual fund of equity positions in other small businesses. The founders argue that this is good, that this allows them to create the building blocks for future growth, and I am willing to accept that argument. That said, though, if you create a portfolio of equity positions in other companies and you make it part of your company, it makes your company more difficult to value. It creates complexities. When times are good, people don't notice it, but when times are bad, those complexities can get in the way of investors and traders taking a position of your company. So we'll see how these two things work out in the future. Now, along the way, there are some macro factors that have shifted. Two of those I've talked about in my earlier posts. One is that inflation is back. It's back globally. It's back in the US. It's back in, in India. And it shows up in, in, in two levels. First is as inflation rises, risk-free rates rise in every currency. And second, as inflation rises, it becomes more unstable and pushes up risk premiums, equity risk premiums and default spreads. In a follow-up post, I also looked at what kinds of companies were most exposed to inflation. I argued that companies with less pricing power and low gross margins, riskier companies, were more exposed to inflation than more stable companies that had more pricing power and higher gross margins. I will leave it up to you to decide where the model falls, but I think it's particularly exposed. I also argued, and this is in a recent post, that risk capital in the first half of 2020 seems to have left the game. What is risk capital? It's capital invested in the riskiest investments. Venture capital money, money invested in IPOs, money invested in young money losing companies, money invested in questionable cryptos, the most risky real estate. It's fled the market. I'm, we're not sure how long it will stay out. In fact, in 2020, remember how quickly it came back and how much of it will come back. But it's showing up in two places. First, it's pushing up equity risk premiums in mature markets. The U.S. equity risk premium has gone from 4.24% at the start of 2022 to almost 6% at the start of July of 2022. At the same time, it's pushing up the risk premiums in emerging markets even more. India's equity risk premium, which was 6.85% in July of 2021, is now up to 9.08%. The risk-free rate in rupees is up from 4.25% to 4.78%. Notice, I didn't say government bond rate. I use a risk-free rate in rupees. That's not quite the government bond rate. Those two movements have conspired to push up the cost of capital for all Indian companies, but especially companies like Zomato. So with those changes put in, I revalue the company. Now, let me explain. The core of my story has not changed. Zomato is still at its core a food delivery company, but I've added the grocery delivery business as a significant business, partly because of how much money Zomato invests in Blinken. That has two effects, one positive, one negative. It pushes up my potential market. So the market that Zomato is going after is much bigger because grocery delivery is a part of the market, but it, with two consequences. First is the revenue share in that market is going to be lower. It's very difficult to get 20% revenue shares in the grocery market. You're more likely to get 10 if you're lucky. So the revenue share is going to drop and the market share of that market is going to be lower than it is of just the restaurant delivery market. That said, though, it's still an upbeat story. I did push up the cost of capital to reflect the fact that we're in a riskier environment. I left the risk, risk of failure at 10%, notwithstanding the large cash balance, partly because the market has shifted unrest. With those changes put in, the value per share that I get is about 35 rupees per share. That's about five rupees lower than my 41 rupees that I got a year ago, but much of that change is coming from the macro shifts rather than the company at specific level shifts. Now, as with my valuation a year ago, this is my valuation, not the valuation of Zomato. Could I be wrong? 
God, could I be wrong on pretty much every input? So what I did is something that I find useful in dealing with uncertainty. Rather than hide from it or deny it exists, I faced up to it with a Monte Carlo simulation where I took my big assumptions and made them into distributions. So the total market, which I'd set, at, no, I, I allowed for a range on my total market, my market share, my operating margin, and I ran 100,000 simulations. The median value that I got of 34 rupees is very close to my base case value of 35, 32. Not surprising because my distributions are centered on my base case inputs. That said though, take a look at the range of values, 14 to 89 rupees. Now those are the extremes. But if you take a look at the existing stock price, around 41 rupees when I did this, that's around the 70th percentile. The stock looks overvalued still. So if you're an investor, you probably should, should still hold off. Now, two more weeks like the last two, you very quickly could be looking at a company that is undervalued. And I would buy Zomato, but not as a standalone investment. That would be imprudent, but as part of a diversified portfolio. Now, if you're a trader, you're playing a very different game. You're playing a game of mood and momentum. Right now, that mood and momentum is extremely negative for the stock. That said, though, it will shift. Mood and momentum always does. And if you can gauge when that's going to happen and get ahead of it, there's a lot of money to be made on this. But to make that judgment, don't look at value. It's got nothing to do with the game you're playing. Take a look, take a look at pricing charts. Take a, look at, take a look at trading volume, visit your, your, your favorite astrologer, go to your favorite temple, mosque, or church, wherever you pray to get guidance. Trading is a very different game than investing. It's not a better game, it's not a worse game, it's just different. I'm not a good trader and you shouldn't come to me for advice, but you have to make up your mind as to which game you came to play. So in conclusion, let's take a look back. I know some of you did buy Zomato shares at 120, 140, maybe on the offering day. And you're looking at your investments and what happened. Then you're going to be tempted to attach conspiracy theories that the bankers, the founders, the promoters, the insiders were all out to get you. Now, I'm sorry, but I, you know, please don't attribute to conspiracy what can be better explained by greed and, the blind, and, and its capacity to cloud judgment, to blind us. Let's face it, a lot of people who bought Zomato in 2021 didn't buy it because they thought it was a good value, but because they thought they could double their money in six months or a year. The problem with playing the momentum game is if you live on momentum, you die by it. And, you know, I, feel, I am sorry that you lost money, but you have a lot of company. And this year in particular, you've had a lot of momentum players look back and say, I wish I hadn't done that. From Kathy Wood at ARC, to all those people who put their money in Bitcoin and NFTs and other cryptos. It's a lot of regret, but regret is not going to get that money back. But this too shall pass. And if you're playing the trading game, your momentum will, will come back one day and hopefully you can live by it again. I thank you very much for listening and I hope you found this session useful.